world of technology has taken a huge turn over the years and evolved beyond imagination. Even advanced weapons that were once featured in science fiction movies, like jets that can fly at the edge of space at speeds that defy the logic of man, are being brought to life. The SR-72 Dark Star belongs to this group of aircrafts whose capabilities and strength have left the world in amusement. What are the rare abilities of this drone that makes it important? Has the evolution of fighter jets reached its peak? Join us as we look into the features of the SR-72 Dark Star that the United States just declared as real. The United States Air Force's quest for a fighter jet that can fly at an altitude of over 880,000 feet without being detected and at an extremely fast speed of over Mach 3 feet birthed the formidable SR-72. This fighter jet is also known as Son of Blackbird. It is a fast drone that is designed for spying and gathering information. This drone was announced in 2013 as the successor of the formidable SR-71, also developed by Lockheed Martin. The SR-72 has more advanced capabilities than the retired predecessor regarding speed, intelligence, advanced technology, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. In 2018, the developer of this UAV mentioned the possibility of the SR-72 making its first test fly by the year 2025, and if everything goes according to plans, it should officially start working in the 2050s. Right now, the project is still just a design proposal. The goal is to make a hypersonic, super-fast drone for spying and checking out different regions at a distance. And since Lockheed Martin is the company in charge of making this aircraft, there is no doubt that it would feature characteristics of next-generation technology. Its predecessor, the SR-71, took its first flight in late 1965 and entered service a year later. Despite the complaints concerning in-flight refueling, the practice turned out to be a routine most aircraft adopted. In addition, the SR-71 also exceeded Mach three countless times, and can operate at a speed of Mach 3.3 at an altitude of more than 16 meters above the Earth. Other aircraft could attain the speed, but only for a short period of time. This attribute made the SR-71 hold the world's fastest record for manned fighter jets. Eventually, it was taken out of service as its Cold War requirements became less of a priority, and the use of satellites for reconnaissance only made the aircraft less fit for that purpose. In 2007, there were rumors about an extremely fast aircraft called the SR-72 that Lockheed Martin was developing. This fighter jet is believed to have the ability to zoom through the sky at six times the speed of sound, which means it is extremely fast. The first news about the SR-72 became public in a magazine called Aviation Week and Space Technology on November 2013. To create the perfect engine for the SR-72, the company in charge of developing the fighter jet collaborated with Aerojet Rocketdyne since 2016. This special engine that is being worked on would enable the jet to fly at extreme speed without any problems. Lockheed Martin also plans to use a special system called a turbine-based combined cycle for the fighter jet. It's like having two engines, a turbine engine for slow speeds and a scramjet engine for attaining high speeds. The turbine engine works at the start when the jet is slow, and then, as it goes faster, the scramjet engine takes over from the turbine engine. Both engines share the same inlet and nozzle, but have separate paths for the air they use. When fighter jets fly fast, like at a speed of Mach 5 and above, the air around the jet gets extremely hot enough to melt some of the metal parts. To solve this problem, the developers have considered using special materials called composites to build the important parts of the jet pieces. These used composites are prepared from a combination of materials such as carbon, ceramics, and metals. In May 2015, the plan for the SR-72 was to use it for spying and attacking, known as ISR and strike. However, they had yet to decide on the exact things it would carry, called payloads. This is probably because more than regular payloads would be needed for a jet flying at Mach 6, 
up in the sky at 80,000 feet. So, to make this work, they would need to create new sensors and weapons just for the SR-72, because the available weapons wouldn't be able to keep up with the super-fast, flying and high altitude of this formidable jet. This points out the need to invent new weapons that can handle the speed and height of the SR-72 to make it a successful spy and attack machine. Back in November 2013, there was a plan to build a smaller version of the SR-72 that could be flown either by a pilot or all on its own. They wanted to start building it in 2018. This smaller version called a demonstrator was supposed to be around 60 feet long, similar to a Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor fighter jet. They planned to put a real size engine in it so it could fly fast, up to Mach 6 for a few minutes. After building this smaller version, what was left was to test it in the air to see how well it worked. The timeline for testing this SR-72 demonstrator was set to match another hypersonic weapon project called the High Speed Strike Weapon. They needed to make sure both projects were on track and could be tested around the same time. So the plan was to start building this cool smaller SR-72 and test it to ensure it was as advanced as they hoped. The SR-72 is expected to be around the same size as the SR-71, more than 100 feet long, and should be able to fly as far as the SR-71 can. It is expected to be ready for missions by the year 2030. The plan aligns with the US Air Force's plan to possess an extremely fast weapon by 2020 and a spy jet by 2030. While the idea of developing a smaller version is a smart one, Lockheed Martin cannot but fund the project on its own, and to actualize the plan, the company has a conversion with the government to get the money for the project, but they still have not gotten a positive response or the fund to start building and tests in the SR-72. Back on November 13, 2013, General Mark Welsh mentioned their interest in the extremely fast abilities of the SR-72. The idea of this jet flying at incredibly high speeds caught their attention because it would give the enemy less time to react if the Air Force was doing something important. Looking forward to the mid-2020s, other countries might start making and selling advanced fighter jets. This would be a challenge for the United States, especially when conflict arises. This made the Air Force think even more about creating new and better systems, including super-fast ones like the SR-72, to replace the older planes that might not keep up in a battle. So, even though they couldn't build a full-size SR-72 just yet, they were thinking about it because they wanted to stay ahead in the game and have the best technology to keep the country safe. In 2013, the United States Air Force made the decision not to fund or support the SR-72 project. They made up their mind to support a different fighter jet, which is known as the Northrop Grumman RQ-180, which they believe is more stealthy than the SR-72. They believe it is a better choice for embarking on spying missions in areas where it takes work to fly. It was also considered a cheaper, faster, and simpler option to design and build than when compared with the SR-72. So, they decided to focus on it instead of investing in the SR-72 project. In December 2014, NASA paid Lockheed Martin about $900,000 to check if it was possible to make the SER-72's super-fast engine using current technology. This money was for a study to see if they could combine a regular turbine engine with a special low-speed ramjet called dual-mode ramjet. Before this, NASA supported another Lockheed Martin study that found a way to reach speeds up to Mach 7 by using an engine that can switch between turbine and ramjet modes. Turbojets work up to around Mach 2.2, and scramjets kick in from Mach 4. Regular engines cannot go fast enough for a scramjet to take over and keep speeding up. The NASA Lockheed Martin study is looking at making a faster turbine engine or a scramjet that can work at the slower speeds of a regular engine. They're even thinking about using existing turbofan engines that are used in fighter jets and other test designs and modifying them. NASA might give more money to make a test version called a demonstrator if this study goes well. 
This airplane will check if the special dual-mode ramjet works in a real flight. Aerojet Rocketdyne, another company, got a contract from NASA in December 2014 to help during the switch between modes in the engine. In March 2016, the head of Lockheed Martin, Hewson, mentioned they were close to a big technology breakthrough. This breakthrough would let them build a smaller test version of the SR-72, about the size of an F-22 stealth fighter, for less than $1 billion. She was excited because it would be a step closer to making the SR-72 a reality, and it could fly super fast at Mach 6. In January 2018, another leader at Lockheed, Jack O'Banion, explained that the progress in making things with 3D printing and computer modeling was a big reason they could make the SR-72 now. He said that just five years ago, it wouldn't have been possible. They could even put a cooling system right into the engine with 3D printing, making it all work together. Orlando Carvalho, the man in charge of fighter jets at Lockheed Martin, clarified that they had yet to build an SR-72, contrary to rumors. He explained that they focused on researching hypersonic technology, which is very important for developing advanced weapons. Carvalho suggested that once this technology matures, it could lead to the creation of a reusable vehicle. In the absence of more information about the SR-72, let's take a look at the features of its predecessor, the SR-71, whose features would give an insight to the major upgrade that would be present in the successor. This fighter jet, also known as Blackbird, is an old aircraft that used to fly really high and fast for spying. It was made by the American company Lockheed Corporation and was known for being super quick, reaching speeds faster than Mach 3. Some people also called it the Blackbird or Habu. It was mainly used for spying from way up in the sky, and its first flight happened on December 22, 1964. It officially started working in January 1966 and retired in 1998 from the United States Air Force and 1999 from NASA. A special group at Lockheed made the SR-71 called the Skunk Works, and its designer was Clarence Kelly Johnson. In total, they built 32 of these jets, and they were developed from another plane called the Lockheed A-12, one of the first to have a shape that made it hard for radars to detect. Originally, they planned to make a bomber version of the A-12, but Curtis LeMay changed the focus to reconnaissance. When it came to life, the SR-71 was bigger and heavier than the A-12, which meant it could carry more fuel and had room for a second seat in the cockpit. People discovered the SR-71 in July 1964, and it officially started working for the United States Air Force in January 1966. In 1989, the Air Force decided to retire the SR-71, mostly because of political reasons. They brought a few back briefly before retiring them in 1998. NASA used the Blackbird as a flying lab to study things for a while, and they finally retired it in 1999. So the SR-71 had a secret start, served the Air Force for a while, had a brief return, and then worked for NASA before its final retirement. The SR-71 had special equipment for its spy missions, like sensors to catch signals, a radar to look at things on the ground, and a camera. When it went on missions, it flew fast and high up, going at speeds like Mach 3.2 and flying at 85,000 feet. This made it super hard for enemies to catch or attack it. If it sensed a missile coming, the SR-71's trick was to speed up quickly and leave the missile behind. After each mission, it needed a lot of time for checks and fixes before it could fly again, so it only flew about once a week on average. They made a total of 30 SR-71 planes, but sadly, 12 of them had accidents, although none were lost in fights with enemies. After it stopped flying, other things like spy satellites and pilotless jets started doing the job the SR-71 used to do. The SR-71 was the second aircraft designed to be stealthy, following the Lockheed A-12. It tried to be less visible on the radar by adding features like chines and inward canted control surfaces. 
Special materials on the plane's skin absorbed radar, and they used cesium-based additives in the fuel to make the exhaust less noticeable. Despite these efforts, Soviet radar technology improved faster than the stealth technology used against it, as admitted by Johnson later on. While many planes limited the use of titanium due to costs, the SR-71 was different. It used titanium for 85% of its structure. The rest was made from polymer composite materials. To manage costs, Lockheed opted for a titanium alloy that was easier to work with and softened at a lower temperature. This choice led to the development of new fabrication methods, now used in making other aircraft. Lockheed faced challenges such as using distilled water to wash welded titanium to avoid corrosion from chlorine in tap water. Additionally, cadmium-plated tools couldn't be used to prevent corrosion. Metallurgical contamination was a significant issue, leading to the rejection of 80% of the delivered titanium at one point. The SR-71 had chines and sharp edges along the fuselage from each side of the nose. These were not part of the early A3 design. While working at a CIA front organization called the Scientific Engineering Institute, Dr. Frank Rogers discovered that a cross-section of a sphere reflects less radar, making any aircraft go undetected. Lockheed modified the fuselage shape to incorporate this by stretching out its sides. After an advisory panel favored Convair's fish design over the A3 based on radar reflection, Lockheed added Chinese to its A4 through A6 designs. The SR-71 had two Pratt and Whitney J-58 turbojet engines, also known as JT-11D-20. These engines were quite innovative and could generate a static thrust of 32,000 pounds. The engines were most effective when the aircraft cruised around Mach 3.2, which was the typical speed for the Blackbird. During takeoff, 26% of the thrust came from the afterburner, and this increased with speed until, at approximately Mach 3, the afterburner provided all the thrust. Flying at 80,000 feet meant the crews couldn't use regular masks since they didn't provide enough oxygen above 43,000 feet. In case of an emergency ejection at Mach 3.2, crews would face high temperatures, so an onboard oxygen supply kept the suit pressurized during descent. The cockpit could be pressured to 10,000 or 26,000 feet during flight. A heavy-duty cooling system was needed to handle the extreme heat from cruising at Mach 3.2. An air conditioner uses a heat exchanger to cool the cockpit by transferring heat into the fuel before combustion. This same system kept the front landing gear bay cool, eliminating the need for special aluminum impregnated tires like those used on the main landing gear. If the SR-71 is equipped with these advanced features, the successor would be a fighter jet with features and capabilities the world has never seen before. This would make the SR-71 successor almost twice as powerful as the plane it was based on. Unconfirmed reports on the follow-up aircraft have been floating around since 2007. Although there have been rumors of an unmanned aircraft flying into the U.S. Air Force's plant 42 Skunk Works headquarters at Palmdale since around 2017, little is still known about the jet. This does not come as a shock because the SR-71 remained a secret for 10 years until it was finally unveiled. However, in the 21st century, it's a lot harder to keep things a secret, and the SR-72 is reported to be very low observable, able to reach Mach 6+, and difficult to intercept if detected. This would make the SR-71 successor almost twice as powerful. Some experts have suggested that SR-72 may be adapted to operate as a bomber, but this would present some serious challenges that even Skunk Works might need help to overcome. To release a bomb and target it accurately would be almost impossible at Mach 6 speed. Also, the plane would need hundreds of miles to make a turn and super powerful guidance computers to line up targets that would be 80,000 feet below. Then there's the small matter of opening up the plane at 4,000 miles per hour to release a bomb. At those kinds of speeds, the aircraft would likely fall apart. 
Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there.